so let's start today's video so in this video we will discuss about the deep flip flop and we'll see the synchronous and asynchronous deep flip so in this video i will cover the synchronous reset coding and next video i will cover the asynchronous reset coding so what is deep flip flop so deep flip flop is known as the data or delay flip flop so what deep flip flop do exactly is so deep flip flop will uh, capture the value at one positive of clock and it will hold till the next postage of the clock so we'll see the two table of the deep flip flop and the symbol so here you can see so here we are discussing about the positive edge deep flip flop so at uh, zero clock we'll see whatever the value input is having uh, output will no not show any changes so it will be in the unchanged state so at the passage of the clock when d is zero output will be zero only and when d is one output is one only here the symbol of the d flip flop so here we have input as a d we are giving the clock and we are giving the output so here we are giving the active low reset so in this part we are covering the synchronous reset so let's start the coding of the synchronous reset so for the coding i am using this eda playground you can find it to eda playground.com so let's start so we'll start design first and then we write the test bench for it so let's start with the d flip flop so first we are writing the synchronous d flip flop so i am writing synchronous d flip flop here so here we have to define all the inputs and outputs so we have d as an input clock as an input and reset n as an input so we'll define it So in Verilog we have some data types. One is net data type and one is register data type. So if we don't declare anything by default, it will take net data type. So for this output, we have to hold the value. So to hold the value, we need a register. So we define the register data type here. So for output, I'm declaring output as a reg, which is Q here. So here we declare all the ports for the deep flip-flop design now let's instantiate marks here so for that i am using this always block so, so once you do this always block you have to define a sensitivity list here so here we are talking about the synchronous deep flip-flop synchronous reset deep flip flop what does it mean which means it is the reset is depend on the clock whenever the passage of the clock will come during that time only reset should come so we will write for that so what is the expectation here so when reset is active low so whenever reset is low that time output should be zero so we can write if not of reset then output we are expecting to be zero else we are expecting output to be as an input which is d here so here uh, the way of representation so so this one represent the number of bit so here since we declare it's a single bit so i'm giving it one and I'm defining it as a binary. You can use it hexadecimal H for that. You can declare D here, which represent the decimal here. This way you can represent it. So, so design is done for the synchronous. <coughs> so let's move to the bench part. So I'm giving name as a TV. You can give any name here. Module and module. Okay then we will define the ports here so for the bench what is the expectation is the all the ports connected from the bench to design should hold the value so i am uh, declaring all of them as a reg
clock t and q that's it so now i am instantiating this design into the bench so to instantiate the design we have to give the module name here so here which is dff underscore screen now along with that we have to define one tag for it so i am giving it as a dff you can give any name so now i made the connection for that then d then clock with clock then i'm making reset and then q so to make a connection so this along with the dot will represent the all the ports of the design and what we are connecting with the design are represented inside the bracket so for the better understanding let's give them name as a clock tv design tv and qtv so that we can make it here So yeah, so instantiation is done. Now let's generate a clock here. So I'm using initial block here. So there is a difference between initial and always block. So first and most is this initial block is not synthesizable while this always block is synthesizable. And uh, at t equal to zero time, this simulator will start reading this initial block. So Let's say in your bench, you have multiple initial blocks instantiated. So all this initial blocks will start reading at t equal to zero time. While in always block, you see, we define the sensitivity list. So whenever the sensitivity list get hit, that time only this always block will be read. So yeah, since we declared this clock as a register type, so by default, this register has the unknown value. So first we will give the value at t equal to zero time. So I'm giving it to zero. Now let's toggle it. So I'm giving it. So for that I'm using the forever block. So I'm giving five in a second delay. Yeah, and with this, so this is how we are generating a clock having time period of 10 nanosecond. So let's move to the reset part. So for that also, I'm using one initial block. Since it uh, it is a active low so i'm keeping it one for a while so after some time delay i will change its value so i'm giving a 12 nanosecond delay for that you can give any number this is fine i mean you can take any number for that so after 12 nanosecond i'm making it low and i will keep it for uh let's say for 10 seconds then i'll make it high again yeah so the reset part is done now uh, let's create this one uh, input so for input also again i'm using this forever loop so we can do it initial begin so dtb we will declare as a one and uh, 
okay let's give the delay of uh, okay again use the forever and give the delay of uh, say 16 i'm taking yeah that's it so this is how we are generating uh, all the inputs for the design yeah one thing you have to notice so we have used here the forever loop so once the simulate i mean once the pointer will go inside this initial loop it will stuck inside this initial block so to stop we need to add a stop command for that so that we can add it here so after let's say we can add it after uh, 100 nanosecond so we can add it dollar finish after Hundred. So here it will be read by one by one. So line by line it will read. So after hundred plus ten plus twelve, which is hundred and twenty-two nanosecond after this simulation will be stop. So this test will be stop after the hundred and twenty nanosecond. Okay. Now we can see the dump also. So to generate a dump, uh, we can add this command, which is dump first. you can note down this one so for the idea play playground if you want to generate the dump you can use this command straightforward and you will get the dump and also we will print the statements of the input so for that let's use the dollar monitor okay so for that also i will use initial block initial begin then i will start dollar monitor so what does this dollar monitor do is it will print the statement whenever there is a change in the design change in the output or ports so yeah we will do dollar time so we can note down the timestamp also so we can write the value of q equal to percentage zero d so i'm you can use anything d b hexadecimal whatever is your requirement for d equal to percentage zero d then at reset zero d okay i think that's it so now we can connect it with the inputs you can use this then yeah that's it and at the end we have to add end yeah that's it uh i think we added all the input and now we have to check the output so let's see the configuration what tool configuration we can do here so here test bench and design should be in system verlog or verlog we can take then tool i am using this ldac rivera then let's select this ep wave here and let's see run yeah all good so so because of this dollar monitor we can see the print statement here since this q is reg type and we don't declare any initial value so it will take it as x once the d has some value it will take that value now we will see the waveform here we can remove this db part it will be better to see yeah, so now you can see uh, so at the passage of the clock whatever the value of d will be transferred to the q now whenever the reset comes here so you can see observe the output here so this output is not has changed now so whenever the positive edge of the clock comes then only this output has changed to zero here and then it will follow 
the D whenever the voltage of the clock is coming it will reflect the whatever value D has it will be reflected to output yeah. so that's it uh, so in next video we will see the asynchronous reset for that thanks